race. And the easiest way to escape a rat race. You see them? Look at those ducks. They're pretty happy right now. I've got them penned up right next to the garden. They're doing slug patrol these days. So ever since I quit my job in Washington, D.C. and moved up to this farm here in northern Vermont, people have asked me a lot about how I quit the rat race. And in some ways, I kind of feel like it's true. I did quit the rat race. I quit chasing a paycheck. I quit chasing a job title. I quit chasing things that weren't going to ultimately make me happy. And I moved up here to this farm to raise ducks and geese and trees and barn cats. And just all around be a guy who is trying to learn how to start a farm. But if I'm being really honest with myself and if I'm being really honest with you guys, I didn't really, you know, like quit the rat race. I mean, for example, it's around 6.45 at night. I just got home back to the farm after working off farm all day. I'm scrambling around trying to get the chores with the animals done and get this video shot for you guys and make dinner for Allison and me. I'm constantly having way too many commitments and not enough time and I'm scrambling to meet deadlines and do the things that I need to do. And I'm working harder than I have ever worked in my entire life. And I probably don't get as much sleep as I should be getting. But I'm also probably happier than I ever have been in my entire life. Oh, and by the way, I'm sure you guys are dying for an update on how many ducklings we've hatched since the last video. I'll give you an update at the end of this video. But yeah, like I was saying, well, I don't feel like I've escaped the rat race. I do feel like I've figured out a way to make my life feel a bit better and be more enjoyable. And there is admittedly a direct correlation with that feeling and moving up here to the farm. Oh, look at the ducks. You see them all? They know what time it is. They're getting ready for dinner. And for all you guys who are wondering and saw that video where I planted the grass seed, it's starting to sprout up. You can see some grass, you can see some clover coming into the mix up there. You know, it's really starting to uh, pop here. So in the not too distant future, there should be grass surrounding our future pond. The ducks know what time it is and the geese know what time it is. Look, they are getting ready. They know it's time for food. Admittedly, life here on the farm is much easier and much simpler. Life here in Vermont has a lot less friction than living in Washington, D.C. At this stage of my life, it better suits my needs and interests, but by no means do I feel like I've escaped the rat race. I feel like the change in geography and the change in lifestyle, though, has helped me get a different perspective on the world. And that perspective has made all the difference. And speaking of perspective, you guys notice these apples? I think they're almost ripe enough to pick. This is a good apple tree. Very tart, but very enjoyable. I think in a couple of days I'm gonna move the geese in here so they can pick up all the drops. Look, as everybody describes it, right, the rat race is pretty straightforward and simple. You work hard and you make money and you buy stuff and then you have to work harder to make more money to buy more stuff and maintain the stuff that you have. And then it's just a constant vicious cycle of working hard, buying stuff, and working hard and buying stuff. And you get all caught up in thinking about what other people think about you and how they perceive your actions and how they perceive your possessions and how your possessions mark you as a person and the value that you have. And I'm gonna assume that if you're even watching this video, you've already probably come to some sort of conclusion that that whole cycle is BS and it's not for you, or maybe at least you just have an inkling that that's the case. So I know that this is a little bit of preaching to the choir, but I think it's important to at least first be aware of when we talk about the rat race, what are we talking about? 
because if we're gonna have a plan to escape the rat race, we've gotta know what we're trying to escape. By the way, as soon as I finish picking this apple tree, this Asian pear tree right next to it, let's get in there, it's gonna be next. You know, funny story, uh, the first year we were here on the farm, I found this Asian pear tree and I harvested it way too early and they were the worst tasting apples I have ever had. But last year, because of a little bit of experience and knowledge and research on my part, I ended up picking it after the first heavy frost and oh, they were amazing. They were wonderful. It was such a good fruit harvest. And so just keep that in mind as you're ever thinking about that. Don't mistake an apple tree for an Asian pear. Now I've got more to explain on this whole rat race thing, but uh, let's go take care of some geese first, okay? I actually wonder if geese even like apples, so we're gonna try this out right now. these guys to bed. Don't cry, you guys! Don't cry! Oh. So now I promised you guys a duckling count before this video was over. So here we go. Let's see. So in our last video, we had only one duckling. And then yesterday we had another one hatch. Come on, come on girls, get up. Let's go, get up. So there are two little baby ducklings there. I was hoping to come home to a third one, but I don't think I see any. Come on, let's go. Oh, there is a third one, yay! So we have three baby ducklings. Everybody seems like they're doing pretty good. Yeah. So we have three baby ducklings and three upset moms. That is our current duck count. You know, when I first moved up to the farm, and it was about, I don't know, about two, three months into moving up here and starting a new job and trying to start the farm and getting the ducks, I had this one point where I sort of reached a, a breaking point. I was getting really bummed out and getting really depressed. I was overwhelmed with how much work we had to do here at the farm. I was overwhelmed with trying to balance social life and life with my wife and managing things here on the farm and managing things with uh, my job. And it was just, it was driving me nuts. And as I reached that breaking point, I really wondered, like, what the heck was I going to do? You know, I'd been working so long and saving so much money and living so frugally, all in the name of trying to get up here and escape the rat race. And here I was up here feeling like I was living in the rat race. So I took a conversation with a good friend who ultimately told me something very important. She said it was only a rat race because I was seeing it that way. And the only thing that makes it a rat race is because you think it's a rat race. And that's the attitude that you're approaching it all. And it doesn't matter if you're out on a farm in the middle of nowhere raising ducks or working a nine to five job in a cubicle. The only reason you're running a rat race is because you think you're running a rat race. And the easiest way to escape a rat race is reframe what you're doing, reframe why you're doing it, and then make changes and move towards the things that you wanna do. 
And that doesn't mean you're gonna wake up and everything's gonna be perfect and all rainbows and unicorn farts and beautiful. It just means that your life is gonna get better because you're seeing what you're doing and you're seeing the story that you're living in a positive way and you're letting that motivate you and be the thing that drives you. Not competition with other people, not the beliefs and perceptions of other people, or not some fantasy life that you've dreamed up in your mind that you hope one day to lead. You know, by virtue of the fact that you're watching this video on YouTube, I'm sure several of the suggested videos that are gonna surround it are gonna be all from get rich quick hucksters talking about, here's how you need to save 4% and spend 4% and live this financially frugal life that will allow you to quit working and retire when you're 32 and all of this nonsense. And I really stress that it's nonsense. Yes, saving money is wise. Yes, investing money is wise. Yes, having a plan for your future is wise. But it's not magic and it's not science and any sort of course or any sort of thing that somebody's gonna try to sell you on the topic. It's just gonna be a load of duck duty. 